Hello, we all know that living organisms and individuals in sense of which they are composed are very complex and diverse. But certain unifying features are common to all living organisms from the simplest bacterium to the human being. They all use the same types of biomolecules. In living organism, biomacromolecules like protein, nucleic acid and polysaccharide are stabilized by covalent bond and different types of non-covalent interactions. Moreover, such covalent and non-covalent interactions are also important for interactions among the different biomolecules present in the living system. In this e-lesson, we will discuss about the different forces for stabilizing macromolecules. Now, what is macromolecule or biomacromolecule? Biomacromolecule is a large biological polymer that is made up by linking monomer units together, for example, protein, nucleic acid, and polysaccharide. Proteins are linear polymers of amino acid. They are the most versatile macromolecules in the living system and serve crucial function in essentially all biological processes. They function as catalysts. They transport and store other molecules such as oxygen. They provide mechanical support and immune protection. They generate movement. They transmit nerve impulses and they control the growth and differentiation. The function of a protein is directly dependent on its three-dimensional structure. To achieve the functioning three-dimensional structure, there are different types of interactions among the constituent amino acid residue. Next is DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA are long linear polymers called nucleic acid. They carry information in the form that can be passed from one generation to the next. These macromolecules consist of a large number of linked nucleotides, each composed of a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. The stable form of DNA is a double helical structure. This helical structure is stabilized by different types of interactions among the constituent subunit. Then, the polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are polymer of monosaccharide units. They are important for energy storage in animals and plants, and moreover, act as a structural elements in the cell walls of bacteria and plants. A polysaccharide called cellulose is one of the most abundant organic compounds in the biosphere. In cellulose, fibrins are formed by parallel chains and interact with one another through non-covalent interaction. Next is the forces stabilizing the biomacromolecules. The monomeric unit of biomacromolecule like proteins, nucleic acid, and carbohydrates have different types of interactions to form the functioning structure of these biomacromolecules. The interactions are covalent bond and non-covalent interactions. Now, covalent bond. The covalent bonds are formed by sharing of electrons among the atoms to be bonded. This bond is typical of carbon compounds. Therefore, it is the bond of chip importance in the study of biomolecules. In this structure, the covalent peptide bond is formed by sharing electrons between carbon to carboxyl group and nitrogen of amino group. Next is non-covalent bond and interactions. Hydrogen bonding and ionic, hydrophobic and the bond of Wells interaction are the non-covalent interactions. They are very much weaker than covalent bonds. Biomacromolecules such as protein, DNA, and RNA contain many sites of potential hydrogen bonding or ionic bond walls or hydrophobic interactions that the cumulative effect of many small binding forces can be enormous. For biomacromolecules, the most stable structure is usually that which have maximum weak interactions. First, hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds form butene, a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to an electronegative atom such as oxygen or nitrogen and a second electronegative atom that serves as a hydrogen bond acceptor. Hydrogen bonds 
at a strength of 12 to 30 kJ per mole are stronger than van der Waals forces and more specific than the van der Waals interactions because they require the presence of complementary hydrogen bond donor and acceptor group. They also have directionality property. The attraction between the person electric charges is greatest when the three atoms involved in the bond that is oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen lie in a straight line. When the hydrogen bonded moieties are structurally constrained, that is why they are parts of a single protein molecule. This ideal geometry may not be possible and the resulting hydrogen bond is weaker. This bond is important for stabilizing biomacromolecules and are also important for different biomolecular interactions. Next is ionic interaction. Ionic interactions are the result of attractive forces between opposite charge structure, for example, the butyl negative carboxyl group and the positive amino group. These electrostatic forces average about 20 kJ per mole in aqueous solution. Typically, the electrical charge that is readily distributed, so these interactions may lack the directionality hydrogen bonds or the precise fit of the bundle walls interaction. The strength of an electrostatic interaction is given by Coulomb's law. Here, E is the energy, Q1 and Q2 are the charges of the two atoms, R is the distance between the two atoms, D is the dielectric constant of the medium, and K is proportionality constant. Electrostatic interactions may involve ion, that is, spaces possessing discrete charges, permanent dipoles, that is, having a permanent separation of positive and negative charges or induced dipole that is having a temporary separation of positive and a negative charge induced by the environment. Then the van der Waals interaction. The basis of a van der Waals interaction is that the distribution of electronic charge around an atom changes with time. At any instant, the charge distribution is not perfectly symmetric. This transient asymmetry in the electronic charge around an atom acts through electrostatic interaction to induce a complementary asymmetry in the electron distribution around its neighboring atom. The resulting attraction between two atoms increases as they come closer to each other until they are separated by the van der Waals contact distance. At a certain distance, very strong repulsive forces become dominant because the outer electron clouds overlap. Energies associated with van der Waals interaction are quite small. Typical interactions contribute from 0.5 to 1 kilo per mole per atom pair. When the surface of the two large molecules come together, a large number of atoms are in a van der Waals contact, and the net effect sum over many atom pairs can be substantial. Last, the non-covalent interaction is hydrophobic interaction. Hydrophobic interactions results from the strong tendency of water to exclude non-polar groups or molecules. Hydrophobic interactions arise not so much because of any intrinsic affinity of non-polar substances for one another, but it is because of water molecules prefer stronger interactions among themselves compared to their interaction with non-polar molecules. It is these preference and interactions between water molecules that exclude hydrophobic substances from aqueous solution and drive the tendency of non-polar molecules to cluster together. The formation of oil droplets as hydrophobic non-polar lipid molecules coalesce in the presence of water is an example of this phenomenon. These tendencies have important consequences in the creation and the maintenance of the macromolecular structures and supramolecular assemblies of the living cells. Now, stabilization of macromolecules by different interactions. The first is protein. In stabilizing a polymer of amino acid residues to form a functional protein, different covalent 
and non-covalent interactions are very important at secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structural levels. Next is DNA. The double helical structure of DNA is stabilized by hydrogen bond and hydrophobic interactions. The existence of specific base pairing hydrogen bond interactions was discovered in the course of studies leading to the determination of three dimensional structure of DNA by Watson and Crick. Moreover, hydrophobic effect from base taking resulting in the exposure of the more polar surfaces to the surrounding water is also important in stabilizing the double helix. Not only involved in stabilizing biomacromolecules, non-covalent bond or interactions are also important for formation of lipid aggregate and different types of biomolecule, biomolecule interactions. Lipid aggregates. In true sense, lipid is not a macromolecule, but they can form aggregate structures in living organism. These aggregate structures have hydrophobic and van der Waals interactions among the individual lipid molecules. Plasma membrane is an aggregate structure of lipid with some extrinsic and intrinsic proteins. Next is enzyme substrate interaction. Non-covalent interactions like hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic, ionic and van der Waals interaction are important in having specific interaction between enzyme and its substrate. Next is antigen antibody interaction. As an enzyme substrate interaction, those non-covalent interactions are important for specific antigen antibody interaction. Next is hormone receptor interaction. Here, in this hormone receptor interaction also, those non-covalent interactions are important. Next is DNA protein interaction. DNA histone protein interaction in chromosome also requires hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic, ionic, and van der Waals interaction. Now we can conclude that biomacromolecules like protein, nucleic acid, and polysaccharide show their biological function with a specific three dimensional structure. The functional three dimensional structure of different biomacromolecules are stabilized by covalent and different non covalent interactions like hydrogen bonding, ionic, hydrophobic, and van der Waals interaction. For macromolecules, the most stable structure is usually with maximum weak interactions. Moreover, these non covalent interactions are important for different biological phenomena like enzyme substrate interaction, antigen antibody interaction, protein DNA interaction, lipid aggregate formation, etc. Although, these non-covalent interactions are much weaker than the covalent bond. The cumulative effect of the many such small binding forces can be enormous. Thank you.